In this tips and tricks tutorial we're going to create a spider glazing style with panes of glass with an easily adjustable width and height. The overall dimensions are driven by two splines which also gives us the ability to create single and double curved facades. To get started we'll open spiderstart.max. This scene has all the geometry necessary to complete this tutorial and a rail clone object with some of the work already done to save time. In here there are three A2S arrays one for the glass, one for the spiders and one for the supports. These have been left on their default settings but with one exception. In the properties rules default segment mode we've changed it to scale so the glass sections will stretch on the x-axis between the uprights. We've also added both splines for the x and y and connected them to all three segments and added a numerical parameter to control the spacing between the uprights. The value for this can be accessed from the parameters rollout on the modify panel of 3 ds Geo Max. All of the segments have already been added but left at their default settings. So let's get started by adding the glass to the default input. In this style I'm going to control the height of the glass panes by scaling them and I need silicon seals between the panes of glass horizontally and vertically. To do that add a sequence operator and plug it into the default input. Plug the glass into the first input. Then take the glass joints horizontal, which is this thin strip here of sealant, and plug that into the next available empty input in the sequence operator. Nothing will happen because the sequence by default is set to increment on the x axis. If you change this to y, you'll see that we now get glass, then sealant, then glass, then seal. Next, we need to do a similar thing for the X evenly input which will give us the vertical seals. So we've got a glass joints vertical node here. Plug this into X evenly and you'll see gaps suddenly appear and that's because in the default input we've got a large pane of glass and then a very narrow seal but segments in a row don't automatically overlap so because this vertical joint here is much much larger than this narrow one we're getting this large space up here. The solution is easy. In the X evenly input we'll add a sequence node and alternate between the long seal and the smaller intersection piece. So add another sequence, set it to increment on Y and wire into the X even the input. Plug in the glass joints vertical segment and then plug in the glass joints intersection segment. Now you can see we have a large sealer then the intersection and large. This gives us the basis for our glass wall and we can already control the width of the glass from here. To control the height we need to expose the scale property of the glass and the glass joint vertical segments. So right click on both of these and go to export, fixed scale and Y. So to set the size for these we need to divide the size we want the pane to be by the current size and times it by 100 to get a percentage. To do that we'll create a new constant which is the current size we know this is about 100 centimeters. Then we need a numeric node set to scene units and this is going to be the desired height of the glass. Next add an arithmetic node, connect the glass height to the first input and then the constant. Click to open the arithmetic nodes properties, change the operation to expression and then edit the expression. And we want to take input 1, which is the desired height, divide that by the current height, which is input 2, and then to get that expressed as a percentage, times it by 100. And hit update. And OK. And then wire this arithmetic operator into the Y fixed scale of the glass. It will complain but you can ignore it and of the joints. You should now see in the parameters rollout if I change the glass height I can control the scale of that segment. With that done we can control the height and the width of the glass panels. Next up we want to use the second array to add the spiders to the style. I'm going to start by doing the left and right sides. At the bottom corners we've just got one connection so we need a spider 1 and then spider 2's all the way up to the top and then a mirrored spider 1 again. 
to use this spider one for only the first segment on the y-axis add a conditional operator and wire it to the left input wire spider one to true and set the properties so that y counter equals one and you'll see you get a spider in the bottom left hand corner for false we want spider two which will be all the other joints so if we wire that into false we got all the other joints now spider two is the wrong um, angle so if we add a transform operator between those two there and just go into the transform properties fixed rotation and set it to minus 90 we can turn that round before going any further I want to set the top padding for all of these to get the vertical spacing and the vertical spacing of course is dependent on the height that we set over here but also we have to allow for the height of the spider geometry itself so we can add a new arithmetic operator take the current height set this arithmetic operator to minus and bring in another constant again set to scene units put that in the second input this is basically going to compensate for the vertical size of the geometry so let's plug this one here into spider one you can see um, that's pushed it up there and what we want to do now is just use this constant value just to bring this down so that it's in roughly the right position. Next, let's copy this. Plug it into Spider 2. And just change that constant value since these are slightly different sizes from Spider 1 until they're roughly in the right position too. So we should find now that if we change the glass height those now move with it. But on the top here we want uh, a spider one mirrored so that it comes down the other way to match the one at the bottom. So we'll need to use another conditional node for that. Let's bring in another conditional. We'll plug this existing conditional node into the false input and we want to take spider 1 and mirror it on the y-axis and plug that into the true input and then switch those around this conditional segment is also going to be a y counter equal to segment and we can sort of target specific positions with that but since this is dynamic and changes it's hard to know what the number of segments on the y-axis is going to be. We need to write another small equation to work out how many segments there are likely to be on the y-axis. You can do this by right-clicking on the conditional operator, going to export segment y-counter to expose that, and then we will take another arithmetic node, again set to expression, and plug in glass height again. Click on edit expression. This time we want to use a variable we want to get the height of the Y spline so if I come up here click on Y spline and click on Y spline length and then divide that by input 1 which is the height of the glass and then because we want the last one this will change the number of divisions but we want the last segment we'll add 1 and wire that into the segment Y counter and I should find now that the last segment is almost always correct. To use this same style in the right hand side simply add a mirror and connect that to the right hand side. Then we get the left and the right done. Now let's take these two conditional nodes just hold down control and select them and copy and paste. I'm going to try create the X evenly with these going to attach all the segments so I'm just left with the conditional nodes and then attach this conditional to the X evenly input. Now I want to wire spider 2 into the true input of the new conditional node and I want to mirror it on the Y axis and also wire it into the true input here too. So I've got them at the top and the bottom. 
And now what's left in between will of course be Spider 4. So let's plug this into the false input. There we go. And we probably want to take the padding and plug that into the top padding there too. So now I've managed to target each corner and the bottom and the top of an X evenly column. And all of this responds to the glass height. And finally, and comparatively much more simply, we've got the supports, which is a single segment wired into the left, the right, and the X evenly inputs. And there we have the finished style. Stay tuned for future training. Or for more information about many aspects of Rail Clones features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos and in-depth tutorials.